You have to understand what is happening when you're getting divorced. So kind of taking a step back because unfortunately we live in a society where divorce is so normalized that people think it's like getting a tooth pulled or it's just, and then they're like, hey, this is really painful. And it's kind of like when women give birth to a child and they're like, no one told me it was this bad. I'm like, oh. I can say at least the past, the last five years of my marriage, I try to, I was in denial. I mm. knew the marriage was over. We're still trying to make this thing work. And mm. I remember one day my ex-wife, she told me, she said, I know you don't love me anymore. Women, on the other hand, uh, especially in today's day and time, use a lot of magical thinking and social media fuels it and popular culture fuels it. And so there's all this like not doing the math, like if there's 24 hours in a day and your energy levels are on a 28 day hormonal cycle and there's a five day work week and your husband wants his dicks up three times a week and you like, duh, 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 like so women are like, oh, we'll do 50, 50 or, uh, you know, I'll be the breadwinner. I'm like, that is a recipe for disaster because eventually you're going to say like, what do I need you for? You want the best men is you have to make him feel respected. And I define respect because so many people define it differently. So for women with men and with men, there's a, a totally different definition as well. But for women, I define respect as your willingness to have sex with him with a great attitude when you're tired and your discipline and controlling your tone of voice when you're annoyed. That's how I define respect. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest with us today. Today's guest is a certified master life coach, a trial lawyer, and former divorce attorney, entrepreneur, and author who is known for her ability to quickly form powerful connections with her people and teach others how to do the same. After graduating from law school at Southern Methodist University, she worked as a lawyer at Goldman Sachs for almost half a decade before uh, leaving to run her first business in 2019. Her personal experience and formal training informs her coaching in the areas of dating for high achieving professionals, choosing a life partner, deciding whether or not to divorce, how to divorce without drama, as well as goal setting, work-life balance, navigating promotions and raises in competitive work environments, and how to manage your mind throughout the day. Brave Arts community, she is Wonder Woman, the glow up guru, Diana Bando. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. And thank you so much for that introduction. I literally am getting chilled. It's such a beautiful introduction. Thank you. And, you know, so the glow up guru is very much a 2024 label. And when people first started hearing it, especially people who haven't worked with me, they're like, why glow up? Like, that's so, I mean, one of my friends was like, that's so urban. I'm like, well, I'm black. So, um, but it's, it's really what I do. I help people glow up. I, and if you, um, I should have shown you before, if you've seen a picture of me like five years ago versus now, I actually look younger now than I did five years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's more of a glow in my face. And it's because of the work I do, the combination of Eastern and Western neuroscience, evolutionary psychology, mindfulness, all the techniques that I work into helping people really kind of rebuild themselves from the ground up so that they have the character that they need to maintain the relationships that they want, the career that they want, the health that they want. And so, you know, on social media, I feel like the term glow up is thrown around and it for the most part is like this really surface level thing. And so that's also why guru is part of it because mindfulness and breath work and meditation and visualization are all things that are also part of my approach in helping people rebuild themselves and, um, and specifically in the case of divorce, you know, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but step one is when I work with people is helping them create a vision for the future. Because a lot of times after being in a marriage for so long, it's hard to remember like what to do next. Like when that person's gone, like I will say in my, in my life, mm. I, um, towards the end of 2013, oh no, sorry, 2023, ended a relationship with someone who I cared for very deeply. 
And, you know, it was a drama free ending. So we're going to talk about that today. Yes. Um, we weren't legally married, but we were living together, and, you know, so it was a, a, almost like we were married. And um, I remember just kind of, you know, trying to stay busy and not think about it. But the, the moment that was like, you know, when the emotion hit, it was the very first time I was driving home from work and realized I wasn't going back to our home, mm. you know? And like just that hitting me as I was walking to the car and being like, I'm just used to going, you know, like I, I had the towels in a certain place. I had the pantry and the my skincare and, my, and all my stuff wasn't, and I just, you know, it was like muscle memory, you know, wanted me to go. And I was like, no, I gotta go to this other place. And like, I, I haven't even unpacked. I don't even wanna be there. And it's like, uh, you know, like I, I put so much love into that space that we're in it, you know, as the woman, because I moved into his place and he lived like a freaking Viking before I got there. <laughs> and so, you know, like no matching towels, no. So it just, you know, just being the feminine, you know, and his face was clean and <laughs> decor, matching color scheme, fresh flowers. Like it was just, I put so much love into that space and um, to have to walk away from that. But anyway, that is part of what we're going to get into today. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here. Yes, for sure, because there's nothing like a woman's touch when it comes to the the home. Like you can tell, I remember one time, uh, rabbit trails real quick. I remember I was talking Yeah, I love a rabbit trail. <laughs> yeah, right. I was talking to this one girl and she told me, she said, I know you are single because I can see in the background in your house how how simple it looks. And I was just like, Oh, I didn't. Oh, I was like, she paid attention to everything. I had no idea. I was like, yeah, I am by myself. She, she was like, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. So I have a girlfriend whose husband is now, he passed away right before. And I'm like trying to think about what I want to say in case she sees this. And she's like, you put my business out there. But um, her husband passed away like December 2019. And he was a pilot. And I mean, so it was like a a big wedding and if he had waited six more months it would have been a different situation so it's good he died when he did but he was a multimillionaire when they got married and side note little rabbit trail but it'll be quick um for all of that that whole like men don't want single mothers choir i say all the time broke men don't want single mothers men with money just want who they want regardless of whether or not you have some kids anyway so she was either late 30s early 40s when they met he was the multimillionaire literally had lawn furniture in his living room and a big TV. Like he had money, but he's a pilot. He wasn't home that much. So he just got the furniture. And I'm like, and he could have friends over. And and this was a, I mean, in his 40, a grown man, you know, with grown money. And he was just like, but, um, okay, I'll tell a joke. And then, so have you heard the caveman joke? No, I haven't. Okay, so it's like, you know, if it wasn't for women, cavemen would have, you know, just lived in the caves, like whatever. But then a woman came along and was like, nice cave, dude. Would be great if it had a door. So he built a door. And then she said, well, the door's great, but it'd be really nice if there were separate bedrooms for the kids. So then he built bedrooms for the kids. And then, you know, she kept saying, and he built that, and he built that. And that's how we got schools and roads and, have, and society, because the desires of a woman inspired a man to build so okay rabbit trail over <laughs> <laughs> no, i i totally agree a lot of times men and i guess i don't want to get too far off topic i have to say right. this to here <laughs> um one of the biggest mistakes that i've made growing up and i think a lot of people because i grew up in the 90s right so great part, music that hip-hop <laughs> era right yeah mm -hmm. i as much as I love women, uh, I wish I would have spent more of my time focusing on me opposed yes. to trying to impress a woman Yeah, and doing everything that she wanted. Oh, if you, you know, if you grow out a beard, you know, you will be more attractive or if you did, yeah. yeah, right. All these different things. I wish I would have spent more time just focusing on my goals and my dreams and when I became older, I would have been more secure in who I am as opposed to trying to 
please someone. Anyway, uh, that's a, that's I a feel whole like that's very much like a, a mature, like, like things that, you know, guys in their 20s, like they don't really get, but that's just maturity that has you saying that, so. Yeah, that that's an episode within itself. Um, yes, I, I do. Know, a few episodes. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's okay. Let's rewind it a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's talk about mindful separation, a drama-free uh, divorce, divorce yeah. journey. How how do you have a drama-free divorce? Because when we talked about this, I was like, I can't wait to hear her answer. Because <laughs> very few people have drama-free divorces. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So the first thing is you have to understand what is happening when you're getting divorced. So kind of taking a step back because unfortunately we live in a society where divorce is so normalized that people think it's like getting a tooth pulled or it's just, and then they're like, Man, this is really painful. And it's kind of like when women give birth to a child and they're like, no one told me it was this bad. I'm like, girl, you're on YouTube. You don't see. Yes. You know? So I just, I think that there's this like, illusion that like oh if it doesn't work out I'll just get a divorce I'll just get a divorce like it's just like getting a new manicure and you know the bible talks about how when um two people are joined together they become one flesh right so if you are not someone who is at all open to the reality of the spirit realm then it's going to be very confusing for you but if you have at least some willingness to acknowledge that there's another dimension that we can't see and that impacts our experience on the plane where we can see things and that can help a little bit but just understanding that a divorce as much as like a legal process and there's paperwork it's also a spiritual separation so you ha your soul has been bound with someone and then you are severing that tie and if you kind of think about it like oh like we're joined at the hip like you know we're we share part of like a hip bone you know that would make sense if someone said okay well to get divorced you're gonna have to sever that bone and there's going to be no painkillers and you're just going to have to walk around and let it air dry. Like then like, people would expect for that to hurt. But for some reason they think because it's paperwork and a court proceeding, they're like, why does it hurt? And like, it hurts because of the spiritual element of marriage. It is sacred and it is a spiritual union regardless. I mean, I don't care. You can be atheist, agnostic. I mean, I don't know, I'm just telling you, you disagreeing with me doesn't make you right. <laughs> so that that's the first and foremost, like approaching it with a healthy fear of the pain that is coming, that the world of pain. And then the, the second thing is just kind of acknowledging, like we know that when someone dies, it's, it makes sense to be sad, even though we know that everybody dies. Like we, we, it's like every time you meet someone, you know that at some point they will die. Like it's just, you don't think about it all the time, but you, you accept it just like water is wet. Gravity is a thing. Like people die, but it's still upsetting. Well, divorce is also a death. The difference is it's the death of a dream. And we expect dreams to come true, especially if you got pumped full of Disney as a child, bedtime stories, happily ever after. You think, and you know, I won't go all the way into core beliefs right now, but for the most people, people believe that if they dream something with enough emotion, it will happen. And so you get married, you see the vows, you get the dress, and maybe there's red flags and maybe, the, but you like, oh, it'll all work out once you get married. So you, you're you expecting it to happen. And I think it's Buddhism. And I'm like, one of the sacred truths was like, you know, it's like the cause of suffering is related to our expectations. I don't know, I'm, someone needs to fact check me and tell me what I'm thinking about, but, um, when your expectations are not met, that is when you suffer. So if you get married, expecting for it to work, your expectations are not met. And anytime your reality differs from your expectation, you will experience pain. And people aren't aware of that. You know, they're just thinking, oh, like lots of people get divorced. It must not be a big deal. And it's kind of like when you're a teenager and, you know, the, the, the caretakers in your life are like, well, if all your friends are jumping off a cliff. It's kind of like that same, like, just because a lot of people are doing it and they're not telling you it's really painful doesn't mean it's not really painful. It just means they haven't told you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because when things are really painful, you don't want to talk about it because it's too painful to even discuss. Um, so just having that healthy fear of like, this is going to hurt, even if you are excited about the divorce, even if, he, even if the marriage has been over for years, there's something about that spiritual separation and that death of a dream when it hits you that 
just sets off a, a you know, domino effect of um, grief, you know, and when someone dies in psychology, they talk about the stages of grief, right? Mm -hmm. And you go through the same things with a divorce, the difference is, no, there hasn't been a physical death, but the dream is dead. And yes. in my opinion, like I, I'm willing to be wrong this time, in my opinion, it's actually more painful to experience the death of, of a dream than the, the loss of a, a human being. Because at least with a human, you always expected them to die at some point. But with a dream, you know, you're having to like, you know. Um, so, you know, my my mom, um, she's the marrying type. She, you know, she, and she, um, she got divorced uh, a little over 10 years ago. And it was, it was, it was a very, a very painful, messy, um, drama filled divorce. And I will say that part of my passion for wanting to help people have drama free divorces is because of the drama I have experienced as a child of divorce, multiple divorces. And, but there was this one time where I was in the grocery store and I passed, like I had a full shopping cart and there was like Gouda cheese and my stepdad and I would eat Gouda cheese together in the kitchen, have like late night heart to hearts. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about like the sight of Gouda cheese that made me lose it. I was like crying hysterically. I just ran out of the grocery store, left my shopping cart there. Cause I just couldn't, I mean, just, but that's what it is. Like when you are going through a divorce, you're going through this stages of grief. You don't even know like when you're about to cry, when you're like, you don't know. And if you can at least approach it with an understanding of that's what's happening, it can make it easier to be more realistic about your capacity, about when you need to say like, okay, you know what? We need to have this conversation another day. I need to pump the brake. I need some space right now. Like I, I just, I can't do this right now, but people think, oh, cause you know, everyone's getting divorced. I have to get divorced. So that's, that's kind of step one, just getting your, expectations in line with reality is step one to a drama free divorce so that's yeah. that's that's good because I, I i wanted to talk about too even from my own personal experience when you talked about that death you're talking about the, the the emotions and the feelings behind it because because i remember the last when i when i talked to my ex-wife and i told her that i wanted to divorce mm -hmm. we I can say at least the past, the last five years of my marriage, I tried to, I was in denial. I mm. knew the marriage was over. We're still trying to make this thing work. And mm. I remember one day my ex-wife, she told me, she said, I know you don't love me anymore. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I was, I was in denial. No, we're going to make this work because nobody plans on. When they say I do, they want a divorce. And we tried to make it work for those last five years. And I remember when we separated and I was in my own place after 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Like, oh, yep. this is real life. And I'm mm -hmm. just crying out of the blue. So when you talk about those emotions and they yep. hit you, it's... It's like a, a feeling you've never had before because you like, this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and even if in your head, you're like, well, but it's been over. So like, what's the difference? But it's a difference. It's yeah. not the same. It's like, ugh, yeah. It's not and it's not the same. And I, I have had a, a divorce client who filed for divorce and then changed her mind. Her husband... Um, cause women file for 70 to 80% of divorces, which I'll comment on that in a second. Um, her husband didn't want to get divorced, but then just accepted it. And then when she changed her mind, he'd already accepted it. Like he had a girlfriend, he had a, you know, it was like waiting for the ink to dry. There was in Texas, um, there's like a, there's a cooling up period. I think they were like a couple days away. She went. I mean, okay, so as a lawyer, like there's calls you don't want to get, you know, when you're representing a client. Mm -hmm. I got one of them. And it was, I had been invited to go to a an event and I felt like, oh, the representation's basically over, you know, everything's done, whatever. 
And um, so I agreed to go with my client and it was a, an event where we'd be sitting at a table with all of um, all of their colleagues, um, professional colleagues. So as I'm in the car on the way to the event, I get a phone call from my client's boyfriend who I didn't know about telling me that she wouldn't be coming to dinner because she was in the hospital because she tried to hang herself. Oh, who are you? Oh, you're her boyfriend. Like he did, I'm like, the reason I know you're her boyfriend is because you have my number. Cause I don't know how else you, a complete stranger would have my number. <laughs> she never mentioned a boyfriend. And what am I, so anyway, I got to the dinner and I told her colleagues that she had the flu. So. Yeah, that's, that death, I mean, it's the end of something that, it's it's like the other side of fear. You're you're wondering, do I have what it takes to basically live life on my own? Because I'm I've been so used to living with this person. We've been yeah, you get a rhythm. Yeah, you get into this rhythm, and you wake up the next morning and you used to making coffee. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, there's no coffee in the house, or just those different things, and it can act, yeah. it can shock you. Mm -hmm. Because well, and when you said it, it literally is the human nervous system, mm -hmm. um, and it's part of our evolutionary survival instincts, it it likes to not be surprised. And so you your nervous system adapts to your environment and that's your normal. So when you shake it up, it like literally is a shock to the human sympathetic nervous system. Um, it's not just a saying, it's like literally, yes, your body is like, this is not. And um, the sympathetic nervous system is activated anytime there's a physiological, so the in your body perception of danger. Um, when there's a change in the environment, perception of danger. When there could be a change in finances, perception of danger. So that sympathetic nervous system evolutionarily back in the day was, you know, to help us have extraordinary power so we could outrun the saber toothed tiger, mm -hmm. get to safety. And that's why you know, all the prehistoric things are in museums and human beings are still here, even though we were tasty treats for them because we have survival instincts. And the problem is the human body has not evolved to catch up with the modern world. So we don't have the same threats, but our nervous system will react when the coffee is not the same, same like domino effect of sensation as like saber tooth tiger a thousand years ago or thousands of years ago. And, um, so I will get into that. That is a piece of it as well. And, you know, unfortunately, most people don't study neuroscience and human evolution because it's not taught. Um, and if they did, they'd understand, oh, this is what's happening. Um, but yeah, I made a point a, a minute ago about the majority of divorces being filed by women. So, and you, when you said, oh, you know, five years, and my wife said, I know you don't love me. Men are the gatekeepers of marriage. When a man decides to marry a woman, he, he may cheat, but generally speaking, like like so many women are like, what if he leaves me? Generally speaking, um, a man's not going to leave his his wife. You know, he might leave a girlfriend, uh, a baby mama, but a, a wife, um, he's not. And file for divorce, it's just not, it's not in a man's nature. Uh, and when I say that, I'm again getting scientific. Men have an evolutionary conserve energy mechanism and it's because men were the hunters and so they'd conserve energy when they weren't hunting and then use all the energy to get the food so the tribe could survive but if they were on that level all the time they'd burn out so you know it's very much a good thing but you know getting divorced that's a lot so most men are not trying to do that women on the other hand uh especially in today's day and time use a lot of magical thinking and social media fuels it and popular culture fuels it. And so there, there's all this like not doing the math. Like if there's 24 hours in a day and your energy levels are on a 28 day hormonal cycle and there's a five day work week and your husband wants his dicks up three times a week and you like, da, 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 like <laughs> I mean, you know, like, so women were like, oh, we'll do 50, 50 or, uh, you know, I'll be the breadwinner. I'm like, that is a recipe for disaster. Because eventually you're going to say, like, what do I need you for? 
Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, ladies, I talk about um, in relation to heterosexual women who want to be in relationship with men. The, the big thing, if you want the best men is you have to make him feel respected. And I define respect as so many people define it differently. So for women with men and with men, there's a, a totally different definition as well. But for women, I define respect as your willingness to have sex with him with a great attitude when you're tired and your discipline and controlling your tone of voice when you're annoyed. That's how I define respect. Like that's, that's how it's measured. So if you will watch how you speak to him and not just talk to him crazy because you feel like that's respect and then sex, like obviously like sex is a part of why he married you. Like, I mean, come on now. And, you know, I was, um, when I was working at Goldman, I was having drinks with somebody who I had worked for and we, but it was like, she got really antsy all of a sudden and was like, Oh my gosh, I need to get home. And I was like, Oh, we'll just go. I'll get the check. And she's like, no, I'll get it. Um, but because she's being so weird about wanting to leave and normally she's someone who liked to hang out. I think she just kind of felt like she couldn't come up with a lie. And this was totally a PMI situation, but um, it's to my point about the math, mathing uh, female energy levels, but she is the breadwinner um, married three kids and husband stays home and we were at drink and she's like, my husband, and I had sex once last year. So that's, and I'm trying to be better. And I was like, like censor, censor, censor like in my head, not out loud. But I was like, your husband <laughs> is surrounded by a bunch of housewives doing Pilates at 11. <laughs> Talking about, I wish my husband was as understanding as you. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, and he's a good man. He's mm-hmm. a good man, but like, he's still, I mean. Well, let me ask you this though, since we're here, mm-hmm. in your opinion, and this is not in my notes, because we talked about okay. respect and, and men needing respect, which is very important. Uh, anybody know who's watching this and who's listening, they know you know, for yeah. my men, because I have more men subscribers than women, actually. Oh, okay, good. I, I'm glad that men are listening to you, because I feel like men need a voice of reason on social, because there's a lot of craziness that yes. will lead men into a ditch. So, yes. Um, yes. So let me ask you, why would a woman be with a man that she doesn't respect? Oh, oh so many reasons. Um, She has daddy issues. She is insecure. She lacks self-worth. Um, she hates men. That, that's a big one. There's a lot of man haters out there, just like there's men who hate women. But um, or she thinks that that she just wants a man because there's a lot of shaming women. Like if I was not more confident, I would be married because I would I would feel like I have to be married to like you know. So there's a lot of women who will just, you know, okay, he'll marry me. Great. Good enough. Yeah. You know, because they just don't want to be that unmarried woman. And, you know, I even think about like the Simone Biles situation where everyone's so quick to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. she drove 45 minutes. I'm like, yeah, but you'd be talking shit about her if she didn't and she was single. So what's she supposed to do? Like let you run your mouth because she's single or let you run your mouth because she drove 45 minutes and got a ring. Like, like, I mean, so from a, 20 something year old millionaire come on now like i i don't even i don't i don't even understand what the issue is but <laughs> yeah <laughs> with with people cohabitating why is mm-hmm. do you feel that marriage is becoming outdated so i think women don't have enough game that's what i think i think if women had more game marriage wouldn't be outdated but there's so many women who are hell-bent on running prostitutes out of business because they're trying to be a better deal. And I'm just like, let the hookers be great. Like I always want to be a, like a horrible deal in comparison to a sex worker. But like, that's not how most women think they're like, and you know, I'm saying this kind of tongue in cheek, but I I said what I said, but I was on a date with a guy a couple years ago. And I was like, you obviously just want to have sex. Like it's clear to me. 
why are we even here? Why don't you, if you just want to have sex, why don't you just get a prostitute? And he said, oh, because it's just so much cheaper to meet women on apps. And I was like, you know what? I'm not even mad at you. That's real. You told the truth. You shamed the devil. Like, it's true. Like, there's so many women who are running flash sales on vagina. And why, why, why would you get married when you can just run around with all the, you know, ponies? So I just, you know, it, we live in a time where it's like, um, if you tell people that they need to take responsibility, you can get canceled. But I blame women for the decline in marriage rates. And I think if women had more respect for themselves and more respect for just the sacredness of their body. And I'm not even talking about just like in terms of um, like your purity. I mean, like the life force energy in a woman's vagina literally gives a man strength. It can help them be more successful. Like there's so much that a woman gives of herself to a man. And if more women got that, I think, I think marriage rates would be higher. Um, that's good. Oh, that's a, that's an Instagram reel right there. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to share that. Yeah, that's, that's going to go viral. Um, that's a really good. Well, let's do it. Let's go viral together. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, as, as you were talking, there was a line and I guess I'm telling my age, mm -hmm. Stevie Wonder, uh, oh, Stevie song, Wonder. that girl, right? Uh -huh. He says in, in one of the lines, he says she uses love not to make him weak she uses love to keep him strong mm, yeah so when i heard you talk about that about the the power that a woman possesses that she can make him stronger yes women have more power than they realize or they don't know how to 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 handle both, manage both. They, they don't realize it and they don't know how to handle napoleon hill wrote a class of thinking grow rich and in there he talks about the power that women have that so many are unaware of the, the, the immense power of suggestion that they have over a man using my ex as an example, just cause it's most recent. So, you know, I wasn't sure about him at the beginning, but we had really strong feelings and, you know, he's a therapist and I'm a life coach. It's like, Oh, the therapist and the life coach, how cute. And, um, but kind of what I was saying. So it's like he within I don't know, three months look totally different because instead of eating fast food, he's eating my cooking, which was much healthier. So he lost like 20 pounds. He already worked out and looked good, but he, he just got cut because he was eating what I was cooking. And then, you know, I've moved in kind of end of the year. And so there's a bunch of sales in January and his clothes were terrible. So I was like, babe, let's go shopping for you. And so new wardrobe and, you know, he's paying so it's, but I was just like you need new clothes and but he would just let me kind of pick and he started getting a lot of compliments on his clothing and then I was like you know your skin you should just let me you know just so then we started skincare so what happened is one of the board members where he worked saw him and happened to know his mom and this guy was you know 40s so um anyway but he comes home one day and was like, one of the board members called my mother and told her, I'm pretty sure your son has a girlfriend because I saw him and he's looking better than ever. Oh my, like his beard looks good. His did it. And I was like, oh no. So I'm like, he'd already like been bringing up the idea of me meeting his mom, but um, it was like, okay, well, I guess now I have to introduce myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like that, like, and, you know, even with my glow up guru, it's like, yeah, glow up. Like I, I literally help people glow. And I say, I, women can do it as well with their feminine healing, um, you know, bringing peace and, and balance to a man and being his calm in the storm. If you know how to be peace to yourself first, yes. sweetie, but yeah, let me just one thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say that. That's good because you gotta yeah. you gotta be peace before you can give that peace to someone yeah. else, or at least try to. It's it's funny you talk about glow up because when my wife and I, when I I relocated, I moved from Arizona to Texas because mm -hmm. uh, we dated long distance. She when I came to Texas, she brought me a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> she was like, 
<laughs> yeah, she she said, "Oh, you used to dress like a paw paw. I don't, you can't be looking like that." So she went and bought me a whole, about to snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, whole new wardrobe. So you talk yeah. about you know the glow up. I get it. Mm -hmm. When it when it comes to why people divorce, usually the yeah. reasons are like sex, money, lack of communication, these things, right? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the most underrated reason why people divorce? Okay, so um amazing question. And um I will answer it, but I just want to, I want to answer something else first. I feel like a politician, like, I'm glad, you, let's talk about the water. Um, so <laughs> sex and money, in my opinion, since we're talking about my opinion, it's never about sex and money. It's always about power and, mm. um, using one or the other to manipulate the other partner. And, um, those types of games often get played when partners love tanks are empty so gary chapman wrote a great book called the five love languages and i just thought that should be required reading for anybody who's in any type of situationship relationship or marriage um or just interact with people generally uh, because everybody has a language that makes them perceive that they have been loved so to answer your question about the most underrated it's like a, a depleted love tank and so, you know, there's a couple I'm thinking about that they have been divorced for 10 years and they cannot be in the same room, which is really annoying because I'm someone who sometimes wants to be in the same room as both of them. And um, outside looking in, it's like, you know, the husband came from a very very dysfunctional home, very dysfunctional, financially unstable, alcohol, uh, uh, chaos, so dysfunctional that he, as a child, would leave home early to go to school because, like, he felt safer at school. You know, he would just, like, as early as he just go to school and, um, you know, became a very successful professional and in his career was always the first one at the office. But, you know, that comes with the human nervous system wanting to maintain, like, he just had that habit of being the first one there. Meets this woman, I'm, I think, in college, they get married. They got divorced after 30 something years, which is another thing. Um, he was very successful. She was an amazing mother. Um, outside looking in, because I, I didn't know them when they were married. I believe that his love language is acts of service and hers is quality time and words of affirmation. Yeah. So he was willing to serve, 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 provide, provide, provide. Kids went to private school, college paid for, got, and like, no, look, did, every, da, 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 da. Um, and he gave all the things that he never had. Unfortunately, it wasn't the right currency. You know, it wasn't the right language. Her language wasn't money. She was willing to work if she needed to. And I mean, he was providing at a high level, right? So they were living um, 1%, you know, in terms of net worth or, or, or households in America. And, um, but, you know, she was a creative and she, I mean, I don't think she disliked the lifestyle, but her love language was quality time, words of affirmation. And so if you're with a person who's always at work, they think that they are loving you at a 10 and they are in that way. Uh, and if you go to your girlfriends and they'll be like, oh my gosh, you should just be so grateful. Or, you know, <laughs> these days it's like cheer seven. I love cheer seven, but she'll be like, spark, sparkle, are the bills paid? You know, and you know, if, if your love language is access of uh, quality time, or words of affirmation, like you either need a side dude or a divorce. Like that's it. Like those, you know, the, the only, there's not a third way to, you know, do this thing. So, yeah. I mean, if I knew her back then, I'm like, just go on here and get a side dude. Cause husband's not gonna notice anyway. But <laughs> um, anyway, they, they had a, a divorce. And, but um, because her love tank had been depleted for so long, um, the, the way that it, um, it just was very messy. And so I just think people are not self-aware enough to know their love language. They're not self-aware enough to pay attention to their partner to figure out what their love language is. They don't, they're not intentional about speaking it. And so they, they, they'll go into a relationship and say, well, these are the things I'm willing to do. And my partner should just be appreciate the things I'm willing to do. And because there's other people who aren't willing to do them. And that should be good enough. And that's just not how it works. Like if you go to Russia and you're speaking 
you know, Arabic, even if you're speaking perfect Arabic, they're going to look at you crazy because they speak Russian. And that's the same in love. So I just think, you know, I teach mindfulness and meditation because the more you can go within and observe yourself, the easier it is to become observant of the world and people. And there's too many people who are just walking through life like zombies, completely disconnected from their bodies. And they go into relationships and they, they're not even observing the person. They're not even paying attention to like, you know, changes their tone of voice or what lights them up or what makes them sad. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a recipe for disaster. And I'll also add, um, uh, I thought I have a copy right here. So in addition to not knowing their love languages, people have apology languages. Yes. And that is another thing that I just don't understand why it's not mandatory reading. Same author, but, you know, the apology languages range from physical, like planned change, you know, to just verbal, I'm sorry. And so there's five of them. And I think if you are not self-aware enough to know, okay, this is what I need to feel like an apology has been made. Um, like some people, they may, so it's like their, their partner feels like they apologized and they don't receive it as an apology because the partner didn't use the right language. So for me, my apology language is planned change. Like I don't even need to hear you say you're sorry. Mm -hmm. You actually don't have to be sorry. I don't give a shit if you're sorry. In fact, I hope you're not sorry. I hope it's worth it because I'm going to be mad anyway. So like, what do you have to be sorry for? Just don't do it again. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. You know, that's my apology language with my ex. His was expressing regret. So he would always want me to say I was sorry. And I'm like, what do I need to be sorry for? Like, I, you just need to know that I'm not going to do it again. Like, I'm probably not sorry. You want me to lie to you? You want me to lie? If I did it, I probably had a good time. So like, you want me to lie? Is that what we're doing? Like, you know, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm good. sorry. I'm not sorry. Does that count? Like, do I get participation? Um, so, you know, like if I made a mistake, I'll say I made a mistake and I will talk about how to not do it again. But if I'm not sorry, I'm just going to tell you I'm not sorry. And then if you want me to say I'm sorry anyway, then like I will come up with some other thing in my head to like make me feel like I'm not lying to your face. Mm -hmm. But like, if you want me to lie to your face, I'm going to tell you, you're asking me to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. That's... but for some, some people that they just need to hear i'm sorry you know and for me i need to hear your plan and all he'd ever say is oh i'm sorry i'm sorry and he's very quick to apologize and all seen sometimes a tear but like you know so that's an example of the apology languages you know it can build up years of resent and then you know one person's like you never apologize and they're like what are you talking about of course i did you know i told you what i was going to do differently in the future and i never did it again but if you're dealing with someone who's expressing regret is their apology language the fact that you never did it again doesn't even matter because you never said you're sorry so yeah yeah the apology languages yeah that's and that's an underrated book a lot of times people yes like, oh, i don't know why people slip on that but like the love language has got so much love and yeah. then but you know i think it's because people don't want to apologize <laughs> that yeah right that's probably what it is they're like look wonder, dude we bought your first book <laughs> i know right i i <laughs> i want to jump into this bonus round Yes. And this these questions are off the top of the head. There's no wrong. Okay. Answer. First one. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Oh, can I do top three? Go give me your three. <laughs> uh one, not understanding the value of their sexuality. Two, being um too insecure to be open to understanding why their appearance matters. Because mm. um, there's so many women who are like, oh, he should love me any size. Any size. No, that's not true. Uh, men aren't wired like that. If you want to be loved any size, you need to go ahead and get a girlfriend, okay? If you want a man, you need to look good. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, and I, actually, okay, so I, maybe I may, appearance would be the number one thing. Like thinking your weight doesn't matter, your hair doesn't matter, your grooming doesn't matter. It's like you, if you don't, as a woman, if you do not like, like cherish your beauty, you, you, I mean, you're either going to die alone or you're going to end up with a predator because men who like, like really want to add value um, and build, like they want a beautiful woman. Yep. And so if you are not willing to 
break us. And I mean, I feel so comfortable saying this because for a long time I wasn't, I was overweight and, you know, just thought, cause I worked at Goldman and I was a catch and, you know, I, you know, I had to lose like 50 pounds and my experience with men totally changed. Like what men were going to do for me without me asking totally changed, like being provided for and protected. And even in, you know, I keep mentioning my ex only because it was pretty recent, but like I got a flat tire and I called him because I was like, I have a flat tire, you know, and, and, you know, cause I'm a woman, you stand long on some guy's going to, some other guy had already taken care of it by the time he called me back, but he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I failed you. Let me take you to dinner. Did it? And I'm like, there's no question. We're not getting back together ever, ever, ever. But being a woman that elicits that type of reaction from an ex, you know, like, I'm so sorry. I missed your call about needing me to change a tire in the middle of a Saturday. Let me uh, apologize to you and take you out for a meal that I pay for. Uh, like, and so I just, I think, um, I, so one of my newest coaching clients is divorced, single mom. And she said to me about men being shallow. And I was like, look, at the end of the, like I'm there, I just, I got, I'll got, I'll, I match energy for, for women and for men. I mean, if you think men are shallow, you are calling God shallow because God made men visual. So either it's okay for men to be visual or God is shallow, pick one. You know, like the reason that the human species has continued is the male sex drive. And if, in addition to the, you know, survival instincts. And so, um, and in studying human evolution and whatever, it's like um, your hair, your your skin, all these all these things that like men find attractive are generally tied to indications of a woman's health and fertility, and so it's subconscious. Like the reason why there can be two women about the same everything, but one works out every single day and the other one had surgery. There's there's the one who works out will seem more attractive to most men and they won't know why but it's because unconsciously they're looking at her and she's like she's got more indicators of fertility there's a little bit more glow in her skin there's you know it just seems like and th that is what men are attracted to health like that is the ultimate universal beauty standard is health and um and so uh yeah just not you know walking around in bonnets having bad makeup <laughs> having bad teeth bad breath bad attitude yeah. Um, and so kind of with that, cause I was like three kind of with that is also not understanding the power of femininity. There's so many women who have bought into a lie that, that being a man is aspirational and, um, and it's kind of, it's the lie is fed through this whole like independent woman, you know, I don't need a, And it's like, that it's so toxic because we are not men and men are not women. We have a 28 day hormonal cycle. You have a 24 hour hormonal cycle. You have more testosterone than we do. So for us to try and be you, it's crazy. It's like a man being like, you know what? I want to have a baby. It's crazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, but so many women are just so masculine these days and, and like proud of it. And, um, and then they'll see feminine women who can attract men who will pay for things and, you know, provide and, oh, you don't want to work, not a problem. And you just handle business and really be like a king. And I'm like, why can't I get a man like that? I'm like, because you are a man. That's why. That's right. Like, men don't. <laughs> yes. Men, men will celebrate femininity in a, in a minute. Believe yeah. me. Is it, is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Oh, yourself. I mean, and, and so, so loving someone, so it's easier to project onto someone else and distract yourself from your issues with yourself. Like, but if you don't love yourself, you cannot, you can't, because you, it, you are, you cannot, you are the easiest person for yourself to love on this earth. And if you think you love other people, but you don't love yourself, you're lying to yourself. You're using them. Um, you're using them from either some to prove something to yourself or valid, but like you, you cannot, I, no, you will never convince me that you are, you can, because love is, um, it requires practice. Yes. And so if you can't, um, if you can't celebrate you and I just, I also think that 
for, for love to be real, there have to be boundaries. And it's very hard to enforce boundaries if you don't love yourself. Like Ooh, I have to I have to say this because I just interviewed a marriage and family therapist the other day. Mm -hmm. And he gave me three indicators of how you know you love yourself. One of mm. them, one of them was boundaries. Um, one of them was saying no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a complete boundaries. sentence. And the third one was keeping promises to yourself. To yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And when you think about those three in today's culture, that's total totally countercultural if you if you're someone with boundaries and you can say no and you keep promises to yourself if if you express that to other people they're going to be nervous because now you've set boundaries with someone they like oh and then you you have the courage to tell someone no so if someone's coming to pick you up for a date and they were late and you said no that's okay we'll try this another time they'll be offended and they can go ahead and get over it if you love yourself. Like, yeah, right. And they, you know, they can like, kick rocks. Yeah. Like, ask me if I care. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I, um, so I, like, we broke up October 1st and I was like, on that, like, October 2nd, you know, I was like, I need to, and I actually recently deleted my apps. I don't want to get into it, but I believe that, especially over a certain age, as a woman, you're better try to meet people in person. So, yeah. um, cause energy. And so anyway, but I met this guy who uh, like lives, I think three hours away. And I, I matched with him like in that first week after the breakup. And because I wasn't even thinking about what I wanted, I was just like, I just need to like go on some date. And, and then after like, you know, started having other dates lined up, I was like, okay, you know what? I, I'm actually not interested in dating someone long distance at all yeah and he kept being like well you know we can meet in the middle and we can i'm like no we can't because i'm not going to the middle <laughs> like mm -hmm. so you can go to the middle and i'll be here but i'm not i'm not available for a long distance relationship and it's not that you know maybe at a different point in my life i would have been but in this season what i want is someone who's geographically desirable and just being willing to because there was a, a younger version of me that would have been like, okay, I'll drive an hour and a half. He's willing to compromise. Instead of being like, no, fuck all that. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> and you I started going to this new church with like really cute guys. So, you know. <laughs> and, and you set your boundary. Who, mm -hmm. who makes a better spouse? Someone who was never married or someone divorced? Ooh, it's a, it's a trick question. Um, so someone who uh is divorced who learned their lesson is likely to be a better spouse than someone who's never been married because they're able to appreciate what they're signing up for in a way that a ne never married person is unlikely to be able to appreciate the never married person it just depends on if they came from a healthy emotionally healthy background where they had examples of loving communication or if they came from a chaotic background so it's like the fact that they haven't been married is apples and oranges it, I would, it just depends on their family of origin mm -hmm. and what, what was modeled to them what they think is normal they think it's no, like i have someone in my life um who is divorced and d dating again and but their examples of um how men and women relate they come from a you know parents are still married but the there's it's toxic. Like the interaction is just, it's like literally like, like blacks, like it's so toxic. And so, but that is what's been modeled. So to them, it's like normal. And I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't like the reason it works is because those, that couple, they're in their seventies now, <laughs> like they're not trying to go outside. But if you in your twenties, thirties are trying the same moves, it's not going to work. Cause you know, it's, you're not 50 years in so you know Definitely. um yeah i agree last question what is the best part about being you oh um <laughs> i mean i'm 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 pretty fabulous like i the best part oh that's hard um <laughs> i uh you know i'm i'm i've been tripping because I have a milestone birthday coming up and I have a lot of big feelings about it. 
but um, I have great friends. I have, you know, a spa membership where they're like really nice to me because I'm, you know, I'm friends with the owner and the membership at Equinox, which I, I don't use as much as I should. But th like there's like I've got a really good set. I was having a pity party one night a couple years ago. And one of my girlfriends was over who's married and has a daughter my age, but we're still friends. And she looked at me and she's like, I know. And so I know this woman is a multimillionaire. Um, I have student loans. I'm not. And um, but she and she's white. And she, she was like, I know a lot of married women who would trade places with you. And I was like, say what? Can you tell them to talk to the trolls on Instagram? They're like, <laughs> you could, like hating. But yeah, no, my, I have a, a good life. And it's it's because of the amount of inner work that I have done in the last couple of years to heal and let go and just get at peace with setting boundaries and walking away. And um, on Christmas day, for example, um, I literally said, everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> like in like, it was a thing. I was trying to like explain um, my gift, you know, which I got an award for the most thoughtful I was told I won Christmas this year, not that it's a competition, but if it was, I'd win. Um, and, uh, but no, I did a very, very, very from the heart gift. And I was trying to like say what it was without having to repeat it 20 times. And there were like a bunch of conversations, but like everyone kind of knew I was trying to say like, oh, this is what it, you know. And so I just was like, ah, and said it. And I just thought the version of me 10 years ago would have like, repeated myself and then been upset and then like stressed ate about it and then been mad and like maybe drink too much and the version of me now like you said everyone shut the fuck up and then I was over it like all of the you know and I don't know if you're with YouTube you're gonna like bleep me but um you know it's like I love myself enough to not repeat myself 50 11 times and to just raise my voice when I want to be heard and let people have whatever reaction they're gonna have and it wound up being like a really beautiful you know thing but I just I think um yes there's cool stuff on the outside but it's it's the inner world that makes it cool to be me so. I love it that's 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 beautiful you can't beat that when you do the inner work you really have the the you know to love yourself you just like nah yeah. I, I did too much work you know so yeah. I appreciate yeah. that Diana, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you tell us what you got going on so everyone can yes. get in touch with you get everything that you got going on. So the key. So you can find me on social media as the glow up guru. There's multiple glow up gurus, but I'm a the glow up guru. So on, um, and I, I, I don't have things in front, but like, um, the, on Instagram, it's the glow up guru. I think it's a glow up with wonder woman is the handle, um, on YouTube. I'm the glow up guru. Uh, my website is glow up guru dot think ific, like terrific, but with think, T H I N K I F I C thinkific.com. Um, and if you go to my Instagram link in bio, there is a link where you can opt into like weekly text messages from me and then my monthly. Um, so the weekly text messages are the glow weekly, and then the monthly newsletter is the glow. And so it's full of glow up tips and inspirational quotes and just things to help mind, body, finances. Um, because that's my work is, you know, not just looking good on social media, but like glowing up financially, glowing up in your health, glowing up in your relationships, in your career, like in your spirituality, all of that. And um, so, yeah, I, I feel like I maybe didn't give the best answer, but <laughs> glow up guru, if there's a picture of me and then the crowns or the tiaras are uh, a new 2024 thing. I was unsupervised on Amazon and I bought one and then I bought two and then I bought three, but there's a meaning. So I did the one with like the green stones because green is the color of the heart chakra. And I wanted to speak from the heart today. And since we're talking about love and, you know, <laughs> drama free divorce. So that's the six. So if you see me again, different one, there's always a reason to just ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, those who are watching this uh, via YouTube, you're going to get the whole full video. So if you are listening to this via podcast, oh, well, you, you got to go watch the video to see. Got to go watch it. Yeah, you, you got to see the whole, the whole, yeah, the whole hookup. <laughs> yes. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. Would we'll love to hear from you. Uh, an honest review um, by doing so. Unless you have something bad to say, then lie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Just kidding. <laughs> Pellet tubes in the dark. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> that will put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You never know who need content like this. I mean, there were so many uh, value bombs dropped today. So you never yes. send this video. Yeah, to and so free. many people, you know, it's a new year. They're looking for love. And so if there's someone that you love who is, you know, trying to do this thing a second time, send this to them so that they're not walking into a landmine, you know, unprepared and like, you know, losing limbs when they don't need to, um, cause there's just, there's just a lot, you know, and there's so much we didn't say today, you know, yes. and I mean, one little morsel I'll add is like, uh, you know, a lot of people will try and approach love and dating from a very, like, um, I don't want to get hurt. And unfortunately, uh, and fortunately part of the, the deal is you in life, you don't get something for nothing. Like there is no love without, at some point going all in enough that you could get hurt. So it's just a matter of developing strategies and techniques for vetting and determining who is worthy. Oh, I think Bob Marley, you know, had the quote of like, the truth is everyone's going to hurt you. You just have to decide who's worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just, you need to have some procedures for vetting. And so that's, you know, that's what we're here for as coaches to help you get it together. <laughs> That's right, for sure. And I subscribe to your channel as well. So Bravehearts, Thank you. everything will be linked up in the description below. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Diana Bando. Take care, people. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.